Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out the Harley Benton HB35 Plus ES335 style electric guitar. This is a really beautiful guitar from Harley Benton. They've really nailed the stylings and the tones. I'm gonna to showcase that in this video. This will also be a pros and cons review. So at the end, I'll tell you a few of the things that you need to know about it if you're thinking about buying it. But overall, what a great guitar. Firstly, a huge thank you to Toman for sending this to the channel for the review. I really appreciate it. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it below. This guitar also features coil tapping modes here, and I'm gonna leave some annotations on screen on the jam track so you can see exactly which mode I'm in at any particular time. Let's get into it. Here's the Harley Benton HB35 Plus up close. This is part of Harley Benton's Vintage series. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this type of guitar, it's a semi-hollow design, which means you do get these F holes here and the kind of wings on the guitar are hollow, but we do get a mahogany block running down the center and this really helps eliminate feedback. This is a flame maple top and it really looks good on camera. What I'm seeing on my reference monitor is very accurate to how it looks in real life. So you can see all the details sort of going out from each side here. It looks really cool. This guitar comes loaded with a Power Ferro fretboard, 22 relatively large frets, and we also get these nice big block inlays, very reminiscent of my favorite Eric Clapton 335. One of the major points of difference between this and like a 50 style guitar is the neck is nowhere near as fat, but it still feels really comfortable in the hand. I think this will suit most players whether or not you're into fat necks or not. It's right in the middle. They kind of kept it safe with that and I really like it. We get two Roswell humbucker pickups. These are the Al Nico 5 vintage style humbuckers, kind of reminiscent somewhere between, I would say, a burst bucker and a PAF somewhere in that territory. They got lots of cut and top end, which is fantastic, but we can also get additional tones thanks to the coil tapping feature on both of these volume controls here. So you pull this up, it will give you those coil tapping modes or coil split modes giving us really usable single coil tones, which isn't common for a lot of guitars that have this feature, but I really like it on this and I'll showcase it in a moment. So we get two volume controls and two tone controls. The three-way toggle switch on this guitar feels really premium. It's far better than a lot of other guitars at far more expensive price points. And I mean that in the sense that you're not gonna accidentally knock it into middle position or knock it from middle to bridge. You actually have to click it into place and it feels really premium under the fingers. We get a hard stop tailpiece here with a tunomatic bridge and the intonation straight out of the box has been fine. Here's the headstock up close. We get the branding at the top and these really nice sort of headstock inlays here. And if you take a look at the back of the guitar, while these tuners look a little bit on the generic side, they've held tune really reliably. The input jack is on the bottom side of the guitar here, which is awesome. It means you don't have to have a right angle cable coming directly out of the body. I can't stand that on traditional 335s. I've owned guitars with that and I much prefer it over here. So good job, Harley Benton. The weight of this guitar is quite comfortable and I'll put that on screen so you can make a decision whether or not that's right for you, but it feels really great on it. It's nice and balanced. It plays great all the way up to the end of the fretboard. All right, let's kick it off in today's video. I'm plugged into the clean channel and my Fender Blues Deluxe Reissue amplifier. I'm gonna go through each of the humbucker positions clean. We'll try some dirty tones and then I'm gonna show the single coil tones thanks to the coil tapping feature. 
This is Neck Pickup Clean. Here we go. Beautiful, over to both pickups. That sounds great. All the clarity in the world while still having a nice low end. Over to bridge pickup, here we go. You can also get some really nice sort of bluesy tones out of that as well. Let's try some dirty humbucker tones thanks to the boost dash from SD Electronics. This pedal is kind of like a tube screamer but with more top end. This is neck pickup. Beautiful tops. Let's just turn down a little bit and see what it does. So it cleans up okay. It does lose a little bit of top end when you turn down, but otherwise. Pretty mighty neck pickup sound. I actually really like that. Over to both pickups with both volume controls and tones all the way up just to start with. Now that already sounds pretty great. That's just both pickups. But if I turn the neck pickup down just a hair, it's gonna give it a little bit more attack and attitude and kind of roll out the low end a little bit more. That's the sound. Over to bridge pickup. fives are far more versatile than people give them credit for. Let's try the coil tapping mode on the guitar. So to get into this, just pull up on the volume controls. It splits the coils, giving you that single coil sound. I was actually really shocked how great it sounds on this Harley Benton. Let's give it a shot on neck. Beautiful. Over to both pickups. Mm -hmm. 
Got a really nice percussive sound to it, but it's also great for sort of that funk rhythm stuff. All right, over to bridge pickup, here we go. Let's try a little bit of overdrive. I'm also gonna work the tone control on the bridge pickup just to show you a little bit about what that can do. So this is a little bit of lead for you. Tone control at about half. and almost all the way on. Now I've got the overdrive pedal dialed in fairly bright, but you can absolutely get a sense of what the tone control is doing on this guitar. Thanks for watching folks. My name's Shane, a massive thank you to Toman for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna give you my thoughts about this guitar after playing it now for the last few weeks. So first up, let's cover the tone. When it comes to the neck pickup, it's got lots of snap, lots of bite, and I think it really sounds great with or without overdrive. If you do have a Tube Screamer style pedal, you're gonna get some really classic tones out of this guitar at any gain stage. It really does sound good whilst still keeping its clarity. I feel exactly the same about the bridge pickup. The bridge pickup has all the clarity, bite, and snap in the world. And if you dial in your amp right, you can get some great sounds out of this for almost any style of music. Maybe the thing that surprised me the most about this was its split coil modes. I found them extremely usable and the neck pickup really shined in that position. Or if you wanna add some drive, get over to the bridge pickup and it really sounds gnarly. Just a little tip, if you do buy this guitar, turn up your volume on the amp just slightly if you use that coil tap mode and it sounds great. So that's how I kind of got the sound I did in this video. I just nudged the volume up without doing anything else. Maybe my only criticism of this guitar is when you're in humbucker mode and you start turning down, it sounds to me like there's no high pass filter in here, which means it doesn't retain its clarity the further you turn the volume down. Now, some people love that. I personally like a high pass filter in all of my humbucker guitars. Just when I turn down, it still retains that beautiful top end. So this doesn't have that, but with that aside, I think tonally, this is really great. Let's talk about playability, feel, and tuning reliability. When it came to the tuners, they were fine. I did have to stretch out the strings quite a bit at the start, but after I did that, there was no issues with the tuning, no issues with the strings pinging on the nut, so it's been set up really well. The only small thing I have noticed is the B string buzzes out on the saddle here. Not the biggest problem in the world, but you can hear it if you're not plugged into your amplifier. It's just something worth mentioning. It doesn't go through the amp into the sound, but it just buzzes out a little bit. But other than that, man, the playability on this has been fantastic. I love the feel of the neck. It's nice and comfortable in terms of its weight. The finish is good. The binding looks beautiful. The back of the guitar looks stunning. And there's only one small flaw on the guitar, which is in this joint here. There's some slight surface cracks here, which is just one of those things. It's the relic look, maybe. I don't know what it is, but it's no big deal. Other than that, the finish is impeccable. And I would say I prefer playing this far more than I did the Epiphone Casino and also my old Epiphone Dot 335, which was a great guitar, but they've really taken it to the next level in terms of its feel, thanks to the binding and just thanks to this really nice finish on the neck. If you're in the market for a 335 style guitar, give this a look. Again, I'll link it down below. Thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.